Jenny, welcome back once again to Solid Gold. It's now the fourth week in my series of Japan Goldfish trip videos. For those of you who are just now tuning in, I was recently invited to be on a TV show called Who Wants to Go to Japan? They find people all over the world that have some interest in Japanese culture, which of course for me is fancy goldfish. And they invite them to Japan to experience that culture firsthand for the first time and be on their TV show. There's a link right up here where you can watch all the videos in my Japan series. The next goldfish destination for my Japan trip Trip was the home of a prestigious family in Japan who has been breeding many different varieties of fancy goldfish for quite a few generations. The grandfather of this family, Mitsuharu Fukami, who unfortunately has since passed away, has been credited for developing the Sakura Ranchu, which is also called Sakura Nishiki, back in 1970. This is a Ranchu with a nacreous red and white pattern, which just means that some of its scales are matte or kind of see-through, and then it also has some metallic scales. It's like a calico but without any blue or black color and apparently Mitsuharu Fukami developed it by crossing a red and white ranchu to a calico aranda and that's how he came up with the Sakura Nishiki. So the day before meeting with this family we traveled by van from Osaka to Nagoya where this family lives in an outskirt called Yatomi and Yatomi is apparently very famous for goldfish cultivation. Fun fact, kind of the mascot of the town Yatomi is this cute little goldfish cartoon guy and Mr. Fukami's family gifted me with some souvenirs that had the Yatomi goldfish on it, which was so cute. Anyways, I know you guys must be dying to see this goldfish farm, so let's take a look. Today we're here at a goldfish farm in Japan. The one that we visited previously was actually just a marketplace, I guess, where breeders would bring their fish to sell them there. This is actually a farm where they're produced. You can see here there's a ton of ponds for goldfish, and this is only part of it. There's a lot more across the street and down a ways as well. This is the home of Fukami-san. Fukami-san, his father originally developed the Sakura Ranchu that we know today, so I was able to see some of those Sakura Ranchu that he developed. They're big, beautiful jumbo fish, and they also have Tosakin and Jikin, uh, what else? Azumanishiki, Calico Aranda, and Calico Ryukin, Calico Ranchu and of course red and white Ranchu. Here's a bunch of little baby ones here. We actually just got done sorting them on camera. So uh, Fukami-san was sitting here and then he had a shallow dish on this top of this bowl here and then he would take a big scoop of the baby Ranchu in this net and put them in the shallow dish and they actually didn't really have any water in there but it was only for a short time so it's not bad for them or anything but it was funny because they would they were making like little sucky noises like when they were in there and um, it was funny so he was showing me how they sort them to decide which ones they're gonna bring to market for sale they were sorting them by size so they would take a big scoop from this net put them in the shallow dish and then sit here and pick out about 15 of the biggest ones and put the biggest ones in here and then any that were left over were the smaller ones and then they were put in there. The baby Ranchu were so stinking cute, I just could not get enough of them. One of my favorites was this mostly white one with a perfect red spot on its head and I even had permission from Mr. Fukami to touch the fish and hold them too, which was such a privilege. So tomorrow, I guess we're going to bring this group of the bigger baby Ranchu to the market for sale and then they're gonna put these smaller ones back in a pond to grow for about two more weeks and then bring them for sale later. So that's what we just got done doing. Across the street there is where they have more of their goldfish in a whole bunch of shallow concrete ponds. That's where we were before and I'm sure we'll go back over there again so I can show you guys those fish too. We're taking a break from doing much of anything right now because the film crew is back over here gathering some extra footage from what we did earlier. So I'm gonna try to come back here and show you guys around a little bit without getting in their way too much. This is like, I think the main area where the goldfish are. There's a whole bunch of big concrete ponds and then down farther there's a bunch of smaller concrete ponds as well. In here is where there's a bunch of baby ranchu. And when we got here earlier the 
the son of Fukami san was moving them around. I think he was moving them from one pond to a clean one and then cleaning out the old one that they were in. Look at them. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty and so cute. They're so tiny too. Wow. You can tell even at this tiny size and such an early stage in life that these are really high quality fish. Just their structure is like perfect. It's kind of hard to walk around in between the ponds because you have to balance on these uh, concrete walls in between each one. Oh my gosh, there's even tinier ones in here. Wow. So little. <laughs> <laughs> they're tiny. Oh, there's more in there too. <laughs> so this must be the area where they grow out the really, really young ones. If I had to guess, there's more of the bigger tiny ones in here. Wow, there's so many. And there's more in here and there's tiny ones in here too so many so cool to be able to see them being raised up from little tiny baby fry and getting bigger as you walk down the row there's like bigger ones in here so neat I would love to see their I don't know if I'll get to, but I would love to see their process of culling the fry too to select out the good ones and pick out the bad ones. Oh! There's some calico ranchu. There's so many fish here. This looks like a few bigger concrete ponds, but they're all empty. And right now they're cleaning some of the ponds over there. That's Fukami-san's son. And I just found out that he's going to take over the operation of the farm from his father. These ones were the first fish that I saw when we arrived and I was immediately really excited about them. They're tosakins and really really nice examples of tosakin at that. It's really nice to see such beautiful and healthy examples of the variety. I have seen tosakin in person before but only because I visited the Dandy Aranda's facility and I saw some that had just been imported from China. It's actually pretty rare that you see these fish here in the United States and even more rare to see such beautiful ones. Mr. Fukami's son saw how interested I was in the tosakin, so he stopped cleaning ponds to come over and bowl up some for me to get a better look. hardly finished looking at the amazing tosakin when he already had some more gorgeous fish ready for me to look at. These were black and white aka panda shukin which could only be described as pure awesomeness. <laughs> shukin are basically long tailed versions of ranchu and these ones were big and beautiful. Red and white ranchu in here. Ranchu. Mm -hmm. 
And there's some jikin in here. Super beautiful. fish in here are ones that are uh, they're trying to breed right now so they have these they're using these as spawning mops it is a terrestrial plant that they have picked and put in a bundle and they hold it down with these uh, metal rods and underneath the plant there's a mesh net as well that helps catch the eggs so the idea is that the fish will will use this as spawning material because there's nothing else soft in the tank that they would want to use. So they'll come over to here and start spawning and laying their eggs on it. This will catch the eggs and then I'm not sure actually if they remove the parent fish and raise the eggs in these ponds or if they remove the spawning material and put it in a different grow out pond for the fry. But look at these jikins. These are so beautiful. <laughs> I have some jikins in my fish room at home and they're not anywhere near as beautiful as these ones are. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see these yet. There's pearl scales in here, you guys. No way. It's hard to see because they've got some green water, which is good for the fish. But there's some beautiful pearl scales in here. Wow. beautiful ones everywhere you look and they're big and they're healthy and they're great examples of their varieties Ooh, look at that one I like that one it's got a little red spot on its back it's cute
got some calico ranchu down here. I'm being called, so I guess it's time to go back and start filming again. So that's all I have for my visit to this goldfish farm, guys. It was such a cool experience being able to see a traditional working Japanese goldfish farm in action, and even more cool that I got to share it with you guys. This was probably the highlight of my entire Japan trip, and the one place I got to go to and people I got to meet that really made the whole trip worth it for me. A lot of you guys have noticed this little picture frame that I have behind me here on my desk. And this is actually a photo collage of myself with some of the members of Mr. Fukami's family that they gifted to me after my visit there, which was so sweet. Now the day after I visited Mr. Fukami and got to see his farm and all of his beautiful fish, I also went with him to sell some of his fish at the wholesale goldfish market where people come to bid on groups of fish that they would then take and sell to fish stores around the area. At this wholesale goldfish market, there were so many beautiful fish all together in one place. It was a little overwhelming, <laughs> but it was awesome. It was so interesting to see the way that they were sold. And in next week's video, you'll get to come along with me on that adventure, so be sure to stay tuned for that. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, make sure you hit that bell button so you can be notified every time I make a new video. I make new videos every Friday and sometimes Tuesdays as well, showing you guys my goldfish, my discus, my other fish, and sometimes my other pets too and sometimes I even get to take you guys on fun adventures like what you saw in today's video. So if you don't want to miss out on every new video make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button. If you'd like to help support this channel so I can keep making new videos like this every week consider becoming a solid gold member. There's a link in the description section below going over all the details about solid gold membership and how it helps. Thanks for watching guys and until next time stay gold.